This is Job 33 and 14. For Yahweh speaketh once, yea, twice, yet a man perceive it, perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slubberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. First and foremost, I'd like to give all the praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakaf Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to you, Akim, pushing this word with truth and charity with charity, presenting your bodies as living sacrifice. We who are ready to live salute you. So I just want to go into this lesson, and I'm going to call it, um, It Was All a Dream. And it's a play on, um, basically, um, um, that song with Biggie Smalls. It was all a dream. <laughs> all right. It was all a dream, man. All right. Because, you know, that's how Yahweh Bashim Shah, you know, programs the mind of men. All right. He works on the mind of men when men are unawares, whether it be in a dream or even awake. You know, because you could dream when you're awake. You have a waking dream. You can be asleep while awake, <laughs> you know, if, if you can understand that. But um, yeah, how, the point is, Yahweh Bashmi Shah controls the minds of men. All right. And this thing, all right, now, what I really want to go into is, um, hold on. All right, now, this is common knowledge, right? And this is something we learned through the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. You know, one uh, of the apostles who goes into it a lot is um, Apostle Gabar. All right, Elder Apostle Gabar. All right, it says Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati on May first, seventeen seventy six, the Electorate of Bavaria. Okay, and you can read all the rest of this. You know that's really irrelevant to it. But I really just want to um, point out the year, May first, seventeen seventy six, that the Illuminati was created. Okay. And before that, you had like, you know, <clears throat> a lot of different factions, different, um, you know, families uh, of these um, Edomites, you know, trying to come into prominence. You had uprisings, um, you know, I believe in 1681 is when they created a, a white people. Okay. So that was, you know, way before that. And uh, that was the way that they were able to divide the people. But all these ideas were put into the mind of Esau, Edom, in order to keep him in power, as the scripture says. Matter of fact, let me get it. All right, this is Genesis 27. And um, 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also. Oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thou live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. <sighs> well, I'll tell you what's the point. Well, I'll keep going. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And when that happened was um, um, when the Borgia family came into power, all right, when these Edomites were basically brought out of the caves, taught proper etiquette, <laughs> okay, all right, but by the sword shall he live, all right, all right, because this guy is, you know, he, he lives by the sword. Not only does he live by the sword, but he is a sword. You know, uh, and the scriptures talk about that in the book of Psalms. O oh, Assyrian, the rod of my anger, and the staff of uh, and, and my hand is the end of the nation. You know, they are also likened unto the hammer of the earth. You know, so Esau is a weapon. You know, before that he was Cain, Quayon, the um, stabbing, uh, which is uh, Quayon, which is a stabbing instrument. You know, stabbing weapon, right? All right, so everything he's done. He's done um, 
by the sword. Okay. And basically, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah has put him in the in the mind of him uh, of this man to be a sword. Okay. He couldn't have done this by himself. All right. That's why I brought out the scripture how the Lord it seals the instructions of men. Okay. All right, because he has that mindset. Uh, he says, uh, by my power, I have done it, for I am prudent. You know, I put down the nations like a valiant man. You know, he has that mindset. But the fact of the matter is, Yahweh Bashim has has sealed your instruction to do the things that you're doing, to create these systems that you're creating, okay? And the Lord put it on the mind of this guy, um, Adam Weishop to create the Illuminati, all right? And he truly gave certain uh, high-level Edomites. Uh, I'm thinking about um, the old cartoon um, Thundercats, all right? In that cartoon Thundercats, you had what was called the Sword of Omens, Okay, and the omen is, is basically like, you know, a prophecy, something you can see before, right? Okay, so it's called the sword of omens. You know, another, like I said, another word for omen is prophecy. So it's a sword of prophecy, <laughs> you know, that could see. So they were given, um, and, 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 you know, when you watch that cartoon, when Lion always lifted up that sword, he said, give me sight beyond sight, right? So he was able to see beyond what the normal, normal person was able to see. And that's pretty much what Esau was given, all right? But he was given that in order to create what is pretty much the perfect hell, okay? The perfect hell. You know, now I'm thinking about the movie The Matrix when um, Morpheus was telling Neo, he said, you were born into... Um, bondage you was born into a prison that you cannot see smell taste nor touch and it's the same thing with the people in this world they're in bondage they you know be, under the system that yahweh bashmi al-shah has put on the mind of these elites to create but the, he put it in their mind and created in a way that it's co covert that they can't see it they don't know it all right <laughs> All right. You know, I'm thinking about the scripture where it says, Ethram, um, gray hairs are, are about his head, and he knoweth it not. <laughs> you know, or there's another scripture that says to the, to the effect where the battle has been set around Jake, <laughs> you know, around about. The battle has been set around you, but you know it not, roughly paraphrasing. So our people, you know, there's another scripture that says, such plagues called they peace. Our people believe that this is the way life is supposed to be. They don't understand that. They're marveling after the beast, which the scripture says that everybody whose name is not written in the book of life will marvel after the beast. So they don't understand that this is not the way life is supposed to be. You're under attack. Every facet of the society is created as a snare. And Yahweh Bashim Yahshah put it on the mind of these devils to create this perfect prison hold on there's a saying hold on let me um yeah this guy right mm -hmm. all right it says better to reign in hell than serve in heaven is a quote from john milton's paradise lost <laughs> right and then you know that goes into a whole bunch of dogma you know that these christians and catholics and weirdos regurgitate right in the poem satan also known as lucifer which lucifer just means light bearer okay yahweh shah could be known as lucifer the elect could be known as lucifer the angels could be lucifer anybody who bears light all right that's just all it really means you know says this line after being cast out of heaven which is dogma false doctrine condemned to hell for his rebellion against yahweh which none of the angels rebel right they're all obedient, all right? There's no beef between the Most High and the angels. The quote means that it is better to rule in a bad place than to serve in a good place. Now, when you really 
have the Holy Spirit on you, understand the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Bashmi Shai and the scriptures thereof, then you understand that this is bullshit, number one. All right. And number two, you understand why it's you start to understand why it's being said. Because the Lucifer because the real D Lucifer that's rebelling against the most high is this devil here on earth. Now let me get a scripture on that. All right. Uh, let us make this as, all right. All of it has a um no spiritual connotations to it, man. Matter of fact, let me get this because I can get this in different um translations, man. And that's exactly what I want. This is um <clears throat> this is Psalms two and one. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? <laughs> right? And the ruling think you know, the you know, the uh the heathen believe, like the scripture says, the inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. <laughs> All right, they're imagining a vain thing, right? It says, Why do the people rage and it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And the and the kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, right? And the scripture says they consult only to cast him down from his excellency. So this is what they're having councils about. How can we keep down the Israelites, man? All right. Who's going to divvy up what? You know, that's a part of their conversations, too. Who's going to run this new world order and all that? That's a part of the argument. You know, because they're divided. Yahweh Shemir, as Scripture says, divide their tongues. All right. The Lord is dividing their tongues, right? And the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us, right? So let us cast their uh, uh, um, away our uh, bondage unto Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai and the men that uh, the people that were set up, right? Let's get away from the real rulers. You know, uh, it says Job nine. If uh, uh, the earth is uh, given to the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof, man. All right. The earth is given to the hands of the wicked, man. They covered the face of the judges. So they want to cover the judges. They want to flee from the judges and their judgment, which are the Israelites. Because we are angels on the earth, like it, love it, believe it or not. We come with the counsel of Yahweh by Shemi Shai and give you what he's proposed. All right. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. He'll have them as a mocking stock, right? Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Okay. All right. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. All right, because Yahweh Shai is the one that's going to rule, right? I will declare the decree Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possessions, right? So there you have it. But let me get some other translations. Uh, this is uh, the New King James Version, Psalms 2 and 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot vain things? So your plots are vain. Yeah, all right, vocab. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed. Right. It was all a dream. <laughs> this is all the things that you imagined. Oh, the scripture says such things did they imagine. <laughs> I'm thinking about wisdom of Solomon. All right. <laughs> Saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away the cords from us. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. Yahweh shall hold them in derision. Let me get another one. American Standard. Let me see this. Why do the nations rage and the peoples meditate a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds asunder and cast away their cords from us. All right, that's a decent one, but it ain't what I'm looking for. Um, 
Um, I should go to the NLT. Let me see what this one says. Um, why do the heathens rage and the peoples imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against the anointed saying, let us break their bounds asunder, cast away their curse cords from us. Same thing, you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, let me see what the NLT says. And this is the last time I'm going to read it. I know I'm just repetitive as hell. This is Psalms 12 and 1. Why are the nation so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? <laughs> and the scripture says that they, they imagine a mischievous device that they are not able to perform. It was all a dream. It was all a dream. The kings of the earth prepare for battle. The rulers plot together against Yahweh. Can't do it. <laughs> and against his anointed one, let us break their chains. They cry and free ourselves from slavery to Yahweh. That's really what I should have just went to. Just the NLT. I, you know, I kind of forgot which um, translation that was, but 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 that's what they want to do. They want to free themselves from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, but it was all a dream. You know, it was all a dream. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking about this scene in uh, <laughs> uh, Hell's is a uh, scene in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Three. Man, you had this crippled guy. Man, he could he could fucking walk and shit. He had powers in his dream. Uh, but in real life, he was a damn cripple in a wheelchair and shit. Uh, fair use, by the way, fair use. I'm using this under the fair use act. I'm not profiting from this. All right. <laughs> but uh, in his dream, like you can see, he became the fucking wizard master. And he was able to get with uh, <laughs> Freddy Krueger a little bit. He had some powers and shit. You know, but Freddy he ends up killing his ass, man. Because uh, then he said, because uh, at the beginning he was like... Uh, He's like, yeah, you want to sit in this chair? The chair had spikes and shit on it, you know, looking like a goddamn wheelchair. He was like, um, no, nah, I want to get in the chair. He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm good, I, you know, because I can walk, whatever. He's like, yeah, you can for now. He said, but when you wake up, it's back in the saddle again. That's what we're telling you, Esau, man. You're going back into chains, man. And this time you're not going to, you're not coming out, man. You're not coming out this time, man. You know, matter of fact, let me end it on this this scripture. Right, this is Psalm 73 and 20. Uh, I'm going to start at 19. How are they brought to desolation in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Matter of fact, let me read up. Um... 16, when I thought to know this, I was it was too painful for me, right? Knowing that our people love Esau, Edom, that they love wickedness, they don't that they hate y'all by Shemir Shah. This is too this was too painful for us. You know, especially when you come in the truth early, you know, right? You come in the truth early, you want to tell everybody about being Israelite, and then you see how the you know, they fucking hate us and shit. You know, you go into that damn, you know, you go into your Jeremiah mode, man. When Jeremiah was, you know, praying for our people, then he started putting curses on their ass, man. And that's the mindset, you know, that, you know, that comes over time, right? Until I went into the sanctuary of Yahweh, then understood I therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places and cast them down into destruction. So, yeah, man, <laughs> you know, and, you know. So now we know the end of these people, man. You know? <laughs> you know? How are they brought to desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors as a dream? That's the point. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Yahweh, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. So Yahweh Bashimi Al-Shah, as, as Scripture says, awake to righteousness, man. Yahweh Bashimi al is a, he's putting his uh, uh, his eyes on, um, as it says in Lamentations 4, he will visit thine iniquity now, man. 
he will discover thy sins. He's looking upon you now, Esau, Edom, for judgment. <laughs> and it's not going to be pretty, man. You're not going to like it, man. All right. Let me get one more and I'm going uh, to end it on that. All right. This is Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of Yahweh, power of hosts, with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and flame of devouring fire. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, right, which is that's basically talking about Israel, all right, even all that fight against her and her munition and that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Right, and that's pretty much a nightmare. <laughs> it shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, and he waketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against the Mount Zion. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> it was all a dream. It's going to be like you was eating a fucking five-course meal in a mansion with a bunch of concubines. As soon as you go to take that bite out of that burger, you're going to wake up with sand in your mouth in a complete desert on the last inch of your life. All right? <laughs> and that's where you're about to find yourself, man. Esau, Edom, and all those that are joined with you, the other heathen and the the honorary heathen, which are two thirds of our people here in Babylon the Great and the wicked around the world, man, of our people. Because the scripture says, among my people, I found wicked men. There's wicked Israelites all over the world. The two thirds are here in America, contrary to the Dagger Boys, man. You know? But, it's, but it was all a dream. <laughs> yeah, nigga, Biggie Smalls, man, his gay ass, man. It was all a dream. <laughs> all right, Esau. It was all a dream, man. All right? Now you got to wake up, man. All right? You're going to wake up in hell, just like the parable of Lazarus, uh, 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 the rich man and Lazarus, man. When you lift, you're going to lift up your eyes in hell, man. You're going to be begging for uh, some mercy, that little drip of water on your tongue, man. And you're no going to get it, man. Okay? All right, so with that, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. With that, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakak, Wadash, Double Honor, City of Apostles, and Elders of Great Millstone. Salutation to you, Akim, presenting this word with true sincerity, with charity, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. We who are ready to live salute you. Shalom and the Bible book.